In this tissue section, we're looking at the corpus luteum. And we can see that it's characterized by this wavy band of cells that surrounds the entire circumference of this antral cavity. And the antral cavity used to house the oocyte and has uh, since ovulated the egg. And now all that remains inside this antral cavity is blood clots as well as some connective tissue. So essentially the corpus luteum is now a temporary gland. And we can see around the circumference of, the, of this corpus luteum we have these invaginations that are actually trying to establish a blood supply because the cell types that are found within these bands are going to be secreting hormones. So if we zoom in we can see the two different cell types that are found within the corpus luteum. So the first thing we can see is these large eosinophilic staining cells. These are, are the granulosal lutein cells, which are remnants of the granulosal cell layer that we saw in the mature follicle. And just adjacent to these cells in these sort of invaginations, we see smaller cells that are more uh, basophilic and more intensely stained. These are called the theca lutein cells and are remnants of the theca interna cell layer that we saw in the mature follicle. So similar, similar to the theca interna cells, the theca lutein cells are going to secrete uh, androgens, in particular androstenedione, which are going to be converted into estrogens by the enzyme aromatase, which are found in the granulosa lutein cells. And in addition, the granulosa lutein cells are also going to be secreting the hormone progesterone. So the granulosa lutein cells are not only secreting estrogen, but also progesterone, and this is going to help maintain the uterine wall, or endometrium, for implantation of a fertilized egg. So if implantation doesn't occur, we'll see that the corpus luteum will actually begin to break down, and this is what we see on the left-hand side of this specimen, or histological slide. We can see these fibrotic scars, and these are called the corpus albicans. So after 14 days post-ovulation, these corpus albicans will form and will have a breakdown of the corpus luteum. However, if uh, pregnancy does occur and we have fertilization of an egg and it implants on the uterine wall or endometrium, the placenta itself is going to secrete a hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin hormone, and that's going to help maintain the corpus luteum for approximately three months. So in that time, after three months, the placenta is now capable of, um, of providing the support of the endometrium and no longer needs the corpus luteum to provide that function.